Good afternoon. Welcome to my daily forecast. Um, today is number 430. And the topic today is conscious love. A is for accountability. We'll get into that in a moment. Um, my name is Barry Selby. I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. Helping strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. And I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine. And every day, every day, I do these talks called Messages for the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And today's number 430. And uh, today's topic, since today is Sunday, and after hearing a very powerful sermon, message, talk at Agape this morning, I figured let's do a spiritual Sunday talk, which is basically um, raising the stakes. So today's topic is A for Accountability. And I'm quite conscious love because relationship can be conscious, and it can be unconscious. I'm choosing to speak to the conscious aspects. If you're somebody who is so, is um, so looking for, looking for, that's a good word, conscious relationship, you want to be aware of this one. This one's a big one. And I thought, well, I'll do A for accountability. It sounds it sounds funny to say that. I don't know if I'm going to do B, C, D or not. So don't don't presume for me anything yet. Um, I'm just going through this process myself. And just checking something there. Ah, okay, got it. All right. Um, so, let's get into this one. Oh, actually, I have a question. I don't want to start this one. Because um, <laughs> the, the temptation is to say, um, I'm going to put it this way. I guess we'll come here. I'll keep, I'll keep asking the same thing. It's like, okay, here's the thing. Does the following piss you off? <laughs> that's the way I've got to approach it, because that's what came up. And... The sort of things I'm suggesting, recommending that might piss you off include um, never, never hearing from your partner when they said they would contact you, or even not even knowing that, the fact that they wouldn't even show up when they said they would show up. Basically, it's being let down a lot, where the, the agreements are broken a lot, because accountability for a lot of people may not be that clear, or you know, kind of amorphous, and one of the biggest components of accountability is keeping agreements and I've talked about that I've talked about agreements being the silent killer yes I called it a silent killer um, about it was, like, it was only last week so about five six days ago so if you want to go back through my previous broadcast and look for the one that says was um, keeping agreements the silent I think it's called keeping agreements the silent killer yeah it was not a pretty talk but it was a good one useful one this is kind of a PS to that and adding another layer which is about accountability in general for example, um, okay, yeah, what pisses you off doesn't feel so good. So let's start with an example, much easier. So if you're someone who um, is in a relationship and your partner cheats on you, that's a lack of accountability. If it's something you have as a rule. So let me, sorry, let me put that on the other side of that for a moment. If you have an agreement with your partner for monogamy and they cheat on you, that's a lack of accountability. That's a flippant disregard for being accountable to you because accountability is um, well, let me say this way. One, let me. I'm, I'm going to use a term that I learned a long time ago in a seminar that explained accountability, which is this. There are three main um, components, methods, or um, I don't want to say caveats. That's a bit too strong. But let's just say that they are definitely things that would be um, contributing, that's a good word, contributors to accountability. And the way that we talked about in the seminar, this is going many years ago now, they use three terms, which is called create, promote, and allow. CPA, as in CPA. Create something means that, for example, if you are intentionally breaking an agreement with your partner, or intentionally doing something that will upset your partner, or intentionally ignoring your partner's agreements, intentions, support, service, whatever that is, that's where you create in the accountability spectrum, which is not good. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back and explain that in a minute, so let me just give it a three first. Promote is where you don't actually go out and do something, but you contribute towards it, so to speak. So you may not be the one that actually causes the pain and suffering to your partner in terms of by keeping by breaking agreements, by not showing up, by dropping disappointing them, whatever that is. You just um, 
Is it, the one way of putting this would be to be intentionally ignorant. Not, for, not pretty, I know. But the idea of basically being in a place where your participation with your partner is such that you are not putting them first, actually. I'm going to have one other discussion about that in a second. So keep putting them first. Come back to that one. And then the third one is allow. Allow is basically where you're not taking any action to make it happen. So it's not necessarily consciously ignoring. It's just ignoring. So those three things contribute to, I should say, those three things violate accountability, let's put it that way. If, for example, you clearly are aware that if you do something it's going to be bad news and you choose a different path, that's creating consciously. If you're aware that if you don't do something, there will be trouble, <laughs> so you take action intentionally to course correct, that is healthy allowing. Third one, when you're just basically, sorry, promoting, get these in order, allowing is where you are being diligent, diligent is another one of the key words, to make sure that your partner is taken care of and everything's working out fine. Now I'm using this in the, in the framework of a relationship because for many people, they may not be able to do this in their own life, but a relationship might make it important enough for them to take steps in this direction. There was a piece in there, I was just in the caption, it came back, and it was, damn, it went right out of my head. I, I'll see if it comes back because I was on a try. I had a thread that came back in there and I, I put it over there and I, left, I didn't. I didn't remember what it was. Hmm. All right, so continuing. Accountability. Well, let me say this. <laughs> From personal experience, in this context, I said at the beginning this is my 430th Facebook Live. I have a commitment to do these now, not so much as I must do them, but I feel it's alignment to me. And so my accountability is. Because today I wasn't playing. I was actually feeling a bit out of sorts about half an hour ago. I was actually going to take a nap because it'd been a long day, very busy at Agape, and I felt this exhaustion of what right um, crest away over me, like like crash over me. And I was like, you know what? I, I just can't do it. And I went, no. My accountability is to my commitment to my audience, which which is the people who watch this in, in replay or watch it live, that. What I was just experiencing then was a reminder to be accountable. That I feel accountable to those people who watch because I said that I'm doing a broadcast every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time unless otherwise promoted. Now, had I had another challenge where I couldn't be in front of my device by 5 p.m., I would have put a you know, post on Facebook saying, running a bit late, catch up, because because I did that a while ago where I was having a really strange, crazy, crazy schedule. And there are events coming up in the next month or two where I may be not necessarily at a place where I can record at 5 p.m. Pacific time every day, and I'll notify you if you're watching of that um, shift because I've got some events coming up, including book signings for a new book, by the way. Um, that's in two weeks. Two weeks? One week. Two weeks. Soon. <laughs> I'll tell you about that when it gets closer. Um, so, accountability is a vital piece of being a conscious person because the thing about this is. I did say in the title, Conscious Love, is that it's easy for some people to be unconscious in a relationship. I don't mean like flat out on their backs, I mean oblivious to other people's needs, particularly their partner's needs. And if you're oblivious to them, you're being unconscious, just calling it what it is. Conscious relationship, I'm sorry, sorry to say, Jermaine, let me read what you said there. In most friendships and relationships, the price is paid where the payment in the, is in the form of accountability reveals itself. Yes, thank you, yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Because it's true in friendships or relationship and the reality is that when you're not being accountable, there is a price being paid. And that price is connection, that price is trust, that price is, um, well, I want to say confidence, but really it's self-confidence. The challenge with not being accountable is there's a certain level of arrogance that goes with that. Because being arrogant dissuades people, uh, let me say this another way, being arrogant versus being vulnerable or being accountable, they tend to be on the opposite sides of the, the place because you need to be accountable. But when you're accountable, truly authentically accountable, you, you don't be arrogant because you're just doing it because you serve, you care, make a difference, which are not components of being an arrogant person. So friendships and relationship quality goes up when you're being accountable. The connection and the intimacy raises as well because you're being trustworthy. And it also stay raising the standards because they know that you're gonna be there for them and that dependability is a huge component of healthy relationships. 
So these ideas, these aspects, these components are triggers, reminders, nudges for you to think about your idea of relationship and how you can be um, more available to love, to receive love, to give and serve consciously in your relationships, in your connections, in your intimacy. It's probably something underspoken about, or I should say underdeveloped for all people. Because one thing about it being accountable is it can make you uncomfortable. Because sometimes it's so easy just to pretend everything's fine, to look to gloss over. Like if you, for example, um, you're in a relationship and you're the, you're, you're your partner's house and you drop their favorite vase and it smashes on the floor. Now, in terms of the accountability mindset, if you basically just ignore it because it didn't happen, blame the dog, that's not being accountable. If you clean it up, throw it away, and not say anything, that's not accountable. To actually take corrective action and communicate it, to risk the wrath of your partner, to say, I'm so sorry, I knocked over the vase, it broke, can I replace it? That's more fulfilling of accountability. You see, there's more pieces to it than just the simple saying, oh yeah, I did that. So accountability has pieces to it that make it work. But also for a lot of people, accountability is something that is um, too easily glossed over. And yes, as, as was said, as Jermaine said, about friendships or relationships, accountability is a key component in both places. You know, I know, for example, this example this morning, um, I was, I basically offered to shoot the pictures for the service. I was at the both services this morning, eight o'clock, at eight thirty and eleven o'clock, and I took my camera to go shoot the third service because they need someone to shoot. And I knew that when I shot pictures, I had to make sure I was taking. I mean, I had to make sure that I was taking good pictures because being accountable means that you do what you say you're going to do. So first of all, I made sure my camera batteries are charged up. I made sure my camera gear was packed this morning, and I took it with me when I went there this morning. But also when I was taking pictures, I checked right away to make sure the first few pictures were coming out right because I realized I didn't set my camera the right way for the environment. So I knew that for me, I had to set the camera the right to make sure the pictures were okay. Because these are all the components of being accountable. And it sounds so, so subtle, but here's the thing. For me personally, one of my lessons I've learned many years ago, and talk about this, and this again about back to agreements, is that when I choose to make agreements, I do my best to make clear ones that I can remember, that I can commit to, and that I will make sure I do follow through on, because that to me is what accountability is about. Again, that broke, that talk I did, I think it was five, six days ago, which I'll, I'll put the link to it in below if I remember it too, which was um, Broken Agreements, The Silent Killer, that was the title. Um, and, and I'm not from my computer right now to go find it, but I will put it afterwards. I recommend watching that because that's a large piece of what accountability is about. So, we'll see what you mean. Uh, whoops. Ah, I'll just do that. Okay, just when I tap the screen, the wrong thing happened. Uh, loyalty, trust, love, to name a few, also are these, those financial marks, too. Yes, indeed. You're welcome. You're welcome, Jermaine. Saying thanks for me doing it. You're very welcome. This one is a subtler one, and I know I was trying to do something light and, fit, light and fun, but truth is, this is a Sunday, and having been woken up again, Spiritually speaking, for the service this morning, I wanted to share something that came through it for me, and I hope this has been a value to other people as well. So thank you for the feedback. I'll make sure I didn't finish. I didn't leave this incomplete. Um, so keeping agreements, doing what you say you're gonna do, following through, owning up. That's another part, by the way. Owning up is a big piece too. Again, as I said, if you if you knocked over your part your partner's vase at home and you don't do anything about it, you're basically not in the best place for being conscious and accountable. So accountability has many places and it happens in every area from small to large, from micro to meta, um, or from micro to macro. So without going too far into this, let me give you homework. Yes, homework. Notice where you and I play with agreements as a, as a keystone because again. Accountability is more than that, but certainly as agreements, it's the easiest place to look at it. Your homework is to look at some of your agreements that you haven't been keeping, whether with yourself or somebody else, because these can be internal as well as external. And if you find those agreements are important enough, recommit to them and make them. If they're not important enough, then be willing to erase them. And if there's somebody else, 
let them know that you're renegotiating and saying no to that agreement, as long as it's in integrity. Because if you've already committed something that they're depending upon you for, unless it really is impossible to do, you've got a, an agreement to keep to so follow through. So consider those, that's your homework, to consider what lines up, what doesn't. Get clear and going forward, be conscious about your agreement keeping. Make these um, choices conscious, valuable, and committed. Because, for example, <laughs> some people's agreements on relationship commitment and monogamy and marriage aren't as strong as they should be. So for me personally, with my clients, having seen this so many times, a lot of times they look at their relationships and wonder why they felt violated. It's because the accountability they have with their partner wasn't strong enough because their partner didn't, I say this, well, in some cases cheated on them, in other cases belittled them, in other cases just basically dropped them all and, and ran away, let, they, they ghosted them basically. And that is not being accountable. See, there's so many different places about being accountable. It's about showing up, stepping up, and standing up in your relationship. That sounded good. Showing up, stepping up, standing up. That sounded pretty good. So if you, in your relationship choices and in your life personally, if you haven't been doing so, it's time to step up, stand up. No, excuse me. Show up. There we go. Show up, step up, stand up. And make your life a testimony or a testament to conscious, loving, caring, keeping agreements, being accountable, and making life worthwhile. Because these sound mechanical, but they absolutely elevate your ability to love if you do these. And that, I think, is a good point to leave it on. Um, thank you for watching with my broadcast. I appreciate being here. My talks are, again, every day, 5 p.m. Pacific time, so you come in and check in every day when you want to watch me. This is number 430 of an ongoing series of talks called Message to the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. They do um, get put, first put out on Facebook Live on my personal page at the moment. I may switch this to my business page at some point, but right now my personal page. They do go to my business page in the replay, so if you want to watch my, hist my history, if you want to watch my replays, history sounds weird, of all the 430 broadcasts, they're on my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Sobina Author. If you're a YouTuber, you are watching it on YouTube, by the way, you can watch them there in replay. I have a playlist under, called Message to the Masculine under my channel, which is Barry Selby. And now um, I'm growing my podcast on iTunes, which is also Messages from the Masculine. We can subscribe to my podcast and get my daily, well, not, my daily broadcast in um, batch format. I'm loading them up 10 at a time. And so you can listen to them when you're driving, doing other things, and get some value that way. They're, the ones up on iTunes now are my, the first 40. They, I've evolved a bit, so, <laughs> so you might enjoy watching lessons though just to know how things have changed. So um, I think that is it. So you've got your homework, you know where to find me. Back again tomorrow at 5.30 Pacific, 5 o'clock Pacific time. Um, you know, questions, comments on this broadcast, please put them in afterwards when I sign off. You can, I'll answer them back, I'll answer and respond. I'll respond to the comments afterwards, that's what I'm trying to say. And um, if you just join me, watch from the replay. Thanks for being with me, as always, I'll see you again tomorrow. Take care of yourselves and be accountable to yourself and to your, and those around you. They will respect you more and you respect yourself more too. See ya.